Hi, my name is Martin Burtz, I'm from Long Grain Restaurant and welcome to chefmasterclasses.com. Today we're going to do a recipe using Clover Valley Fine Foods Pork Belly. It's something that I'm really passionate about and I really want to share with you this particular dish. It's going to be braised in master stock and then we're going to serve it on Chinese broccoli and we're going to use the master stock as a sauce at the end and you can eat it with rice and, uh, and it's a great sharing dish as well. So ginger, some garlic, peeled garlic obviously, and some coriander root. So just make sure that you buy coriander that has got the root attached and then obviously just cut it off where the green starts on the stem. And I'm gonna put about four into there. And I'm gonna also add a little bit of sea salt into my mortar and pestle. You can do this in a blender, but I prefer to do it in a mortar and pestle because it's just what I like to do. And just pounding that until it's a uniform paste. I'm just gonna remove the paste from the mortar and pestle. I'm actually gonna just grind some white peppercorn through there. You can actually pound it into the paste as well, but I prefer just to use this grinder. In the recipe, I add some Chinese rock candy. Now, Chinese rock candy is just cane sugar that's been very lightly processed and it looks like crystal. And what it does for the actual master stock, it actually gives it a sheen. And that's why, and also we need it for the sweetener. So dropping the rock candy into the mortar and pestle, it does need to be uh, pounded. Cinnamon bark, some star anise. And we're also gonna just put in a few small dried chilies just to give it a little bit of heat, but not too much. After we cook off the spice, we're going to add the stock and the chow sing wine, which is cooking, Chinese cooking wine, which is going to be deglazing our pan. We're gonna be adding then the rock candy and then adding the stock. So I'm using white chicken stock today, or you can use water. Just putting the paste in there and then Don't be too concerned about the oil. If you're really worried about your paste catching, then just add a little bit more oil because at the end, when it simmers, which it needs to do for a little while, you can always skin that oil away anyway. So I'm going to add the cinnamon star anise and those small chilies now as well because they need to do a bit of cooking in with the paste. And what you are looking for is just cooking out the rawness of the garlic and the ginger. It's really important to get that rawness out of there, otherwise the end product's not gonna be very good and it's also not gonna be as good a depth of flavor as, as you really need it to be. Paste is actually starting to caramelize and you can tell also because it starts to stick together a little bit and it gets really fragrant and it just smells like lovely deep fried roasted garlic and that's what you're really after. So at this stage now, what we want to do is add the Chinese cooking wine. So just bring the cooking wine back to the boil and then what we're going to do next is add the rock candy, some light yellow bean soy. It's really important to add the light yellow bean soy uh, because it just hasn't got the real strong flavour of a normal dark deep soy. Next thing is some oyster sauce. So I've got some chicken stock boiling at the back. Now it's just white chicken stock that I've strained obviously the bones off. I've just added a little bit more ginger and some green shallot to it just to give it some added flavour and we're going to add the stock into the base that we've cooked out. Great, so it's salty. It's a little sweet. You can start tasting all of the spice, the cinnamon, the star anise, the hint of chili, the ginger, the coriander. So that's exactly what we want. And you can see now that it's coming to the boil, the fat or the oil that we did use to cook it out in is, is starting to form a layer on the top. So now is the time to skim that off. What I've got here is a midsection of pork belly. It's been deboned, so the rib 
the rib bones would run through the pork like that, they've been removed. I'm gonna put it into a braising pan. So I'm just gonna add some orange zest to my dish. And also, I'm just gonna add the juice as well. We've just got a piece of ginger and I'm just gonna slice it and just pop those around the pork as well. So bringing the master stock over, I'm just pouring that over the pork. Maybe a bit of cinnamon in there as well. And now I'm going to cover this and put it into the oven at 140 degrees for about three to four hours. You just need to be aware of when it's ready, that when you press it or use some tongs, that it doesn't have any more spring left in the meat. And when I do all my braise, especially if I'm covering it with alfoil, I always cover with kitchen paper or silicon paper, baking paper first, and it just stops any reaction with the alfoil. Check it after three hours, pretty sure it will be cooked after three hours. Again, using the tongs, no spring, it'll be ready. So I've taken the pork out of the oven, just lifting it up and pressing it, as I said before, with the tongs to te test it, and it's nice and soft, there's no more spring. If I really pressed hard on it, it would just go straight through, so you can see it's lovely and soft. To move all of our aromats, I'm just gonna try and just get get him out now in one go and he's still really hot so I'll just transfer it onto another tray so what I'm going to do now is actually cover it with some more baking paper so I just want to have a really smooth even layer of skin when I go to roast it and now I'm going to refrigerate it either for two to three hours or you can do it overnight. So it's a great thing to do the day before so it's ready for your dinner party or lunch party the next day. So for the final dish, I'm just going to blanch some Chinese broccoli, which is gonna go underneath the pork belly in salted boiling water. And I've also got some master stock here, which I've reduced down a little bit and that's going to be used for our end product or our sauce for our final dish so it's just boiling away. I've also added a little bit more ginger, a little bit more orange zest and some green shallot. The big piece I just cut into two pieces and I've roasted it in the oven. And you can see how lovely, and that's what I was talking about at the beginning, not to put too much sugar into the end product, otherwise this will turn too dark in that slow cooking process and also the final roasting that we've just done. And I'm just going to cut that and you can see it's lovely and crispy. And you can see it's falling apart there which is exactly what you want. To plate the dish up we've got the Chinese broccoli on our plate. And I recommend using a bowl because we're using some of the braising liquid again to use as our sauce. Cutting our pork. I'm putting some of that pork over the broccoli. And then I've got the stock that we've reduced in the pan and it's got some orange zest through it. can just cut a little bit of spring onion on an angle. Totally up to you. And put that over the top. And if you're into having a bit of extra heat, just some long red chili. And I've got some deep fried shallots as well that we can just put over the top. And a bit of extra ginger. And this is my braised Clover Valley Fine Foods pork belly.